Today was a significant day for all veterans. Um, the Mission Act is going to allow veterans um, a guarantee to receive health care, either at the VA or in the community, and especially when a veteran cannot receive timely care or quality care at their nearest VA, they now unequivocally can get access in the community. So it's a major day for us, and we're really excited. Well, there are seven different programs right now for how veterans receive care in the community, and it's still not working well for all of them. I've met veterans out in rural areas that still are having to travel uh, several hours in order to get to care. Uh, and I've personally seen this as a caregiver of someone who's like a father to me as he was getting care in the Tucson community, but it was often confusing, and we would get bills sometimes, and we had to work with the VA. Veterans should not, and caregivers should not have to be struggling with red tape and confusion when they're also dealing with a diagnosis. They should just be focusing on their care. Their families should be focusing on their care. So this legislation streamlines these seven different programs into one, and they've got a one-year glide path for them to get to this. There's going to be a lot of work that has to be done, but it allows our veterans to get the quality care they need, regardless of where they live, regardless of what their diagnosis is, in the right time for them to, uh, you know, to get the support that they need. Uh, so it removes the barriers. So they get the care at the right time, at the right place, from the right specialist. The greatest benefit of this legislation is care for the veteran comes first. That it streamlines all these programs into one so that the veteran can get the care they need at the right time and at the right place by the right specialist. Well, the president handed me this pen after signing it into law, and I just felt that after what you've been through, Steve, mm -hmm. uh, both serving our country, but then at the hands of the VA, not doing their job, uh, that has put you in the situation that you're in. You're continuing to be a hero, but I felt like this is a big day for you, but you're still struggling with Thank cancer. You. Uh, and you deserve to have this pen as a reminder that we got your back and we're not gonna, we're, we're not gonna leave you alone. Thank we're you so you. much. Sorry. The President's signature of the Mission Act um, absolutely um, reinforces his campaign pledge, and which is why, frankly, you know, we supported candidate Trump then to be president. Um, it's because you know, he vowed that he would allow veterans choice. And so, so choice was a great plan that was passed a year ago, but now it's permanent. And now not only do we have the options of the VA versus the community, but also there was an issue of funding where the choice program was continuously having to be refunded every quarter, and now it's going to be per funded for each year. So therefore, we don't have to worry about the choice program running out of money. So we think it was absolutely a historical day for veterans throughout the world. Look, President Trump from day one has shown that he cares about our military and he cares about our veterans, and he's delivering on his promises. Absolutely. He first signed into law the VA Accountability Act. Uh, took a, a, a little bit of time, but a lot of prodding uh, for some of our uh, teammates on the other side of the aisle to get on board uh, so that people who are not doing their job at the VA can be fired instead of being protected as they're failing our veterans. And now this, the VA Mission Act, is the next step forward uh, to streamline these, uh, these, these programs that provide care in the community and, uh, and to fund them so that the veterans get the care they need. President Trump has promised he's going to support our veterans and he's delivered on that promise and he did it today. Well, the first thing to be done is to make sure that no taxpayer money is being used for VA employees to be doing union business. I mean, the taxpayers work hard, and they are funded in order to care for our veterans. I have an amendment on the VA appropriations bill this week that's going to ensure that no funding is used for union activities. This is the right thing to do. Look, additionally, this bill needs to be implemented. This is like turning an aircraft carrier around. So as the bureaucracy is trying to adjust to a new culture and leadership that is saying care for the veteran comes first, you need to be efficient and you need to be effective and transparent and honest. Uh, in, you know, turning that into a new process to get care downtown is going to take a lot of oversight on our part uh, as they implement it so that it actually ends up with the best care for our veterans. I totally agree. And in addition to that, one thing I'd recommend is uh, VA leadership needs to hold bad doctors accountable. And so currently we've had a system where doctors who don't have proper credentials, who are continuing to perform malpractice, who will harm veterans have not been fired historically. And so yeah. I think together through the Mission Act should also reinforce and, re and should empower um, leaders of the VA to fire those bad actors so that therefore we can ensure future veterans are getting great care. 
There's other things that have started to improve, certainly as a female veteran myself. Uh, in the past, I get my care at the VA as well. In the past, a lot of women veterans really felt like they weren't welcome in VA medical facilities, and that's changing. Uh, but we still have more to do to make sure that female veterans have the access to care that they need that's unique to them, especially those who've been through military sexual trauma or other things that are very unique, uh, and make sure that they feel welcome uh, as veterans and as warriors, uh, and, and, and they are also given the care. So that's, that's another focus area that, continue, that needs to continue to improve. You know, the, I think the main thing I would um, just reiterate is um, is my personal you know appreciation for you, for your team, for everyone that's rallied behind the veteran community because you know this has been the largest hospital crisis yeah. in the history of our nation, yeah. in the history of our nation. And so, um, you know, it was hard initially, but but seeing that people are behind us supporting the veteran yeah. community means everything because we can't do it alone. And now that we yeah. see that. Congress is behind us, the president's behind us, the vice president's mm -hmm. behind us. It gives me faith that before I check out of this world, I will know personally mm -hmm. that every veteran will have access to care either at the VA or at a private facility um, and not have to ever go through what I went through. So yeah. thank you. Steve, thank you for your service. Uh, and you have suffered uh, at the hands of mistakes at the VA. Uh, you and your family have been strong advocates and, and choosing to speak out uh, and to identify what's wrong and what needs Thank to be you. fixed. And I will just say it was a real honor uh, to be there at the White House today, uh, be with you as Arizonans uh, as this historic legislation is signed into law. Thank you.